<laughs> there it is again, like a swarm. No, what do you mean? I don't feel it, but we should still be careful. There were footprints back there, and I'm pretty sure they were fresh. Looks like our suspect. If she's in here, we need to plan our next step carefully. Once we detain a credible suspect, who knows what the Union and the Wild Pines will do. We'll set in motion events we have no control over. This part of town is a fine clockwork puzzle. Disturb its peace, and it will start breaking down uncontrollably. Keep calm. Go over the whole situation in detail. Well, we are not responsible for what we can't predict, are we? I don't think the entire city will be raised to the ground. I think I see a cavern. Maybe more cellars? I think we've been careful enough. We still have the element of surprise. I wouldn't be so sure. You haven't exactly been sneaking. Or maybe not. Either way, once we go deeper, there will be no turning back. pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance. But here we are. Don't focus on the pain. Focus on doing your job. Tell her she's under arrest. Really now? Check this out. You're overwhelmed with a new surge of violent static. It feels like a blood vessel exploded in your brain. I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. Wow, check out the big brains on you. You're not entirely wrong. A pale latitude compressor is used to sort of make the pale more manageable. With a lot of these, you can force a radio signal grid on the pail, literally crunch the distance across it. Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pail, people lose their minds in just a few years. So, what we are experiencing is a concentration of radio waves. Precisely. This is an industrial strength paraboloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you may be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. I built it myself. And she's proud of it too, as she ought to be. This is way beyond your abilities. That's illegal. I'm guessing it's patented. But we are beyond that, aren't we? Oh yeah, way beyond. No, once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself though. It's a bit like waking out of a very confusing dream. 
Yeah, I stuck my head in there before using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. Yeah, let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. If you've got something really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. Damn this. God damn it. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. The gun she's carrying is a two-barreled front loader, not like the murder weapon. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while. So you found my shack, huh? I'm not surprised. So nice. That's one knife I didn't want to find to my back. Not anymore, no. This could have turned out pretty bad for me if you hadn't walked right into 25 bands of ultra-high frequencies. No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching, though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No, he wouldn't have broken first. Oh, well, I guess I always knew she was a survivor above all else. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How did you find me? Oh, fuck. Took some convincing my ass. Those guys liked me, I know it. This is what happens to people who people like. A dull despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck do the rest of you get by? I did, didn't I? Now you've come for me. <laughs> fuck them all the same. Like what? I already told you I didn't do it. I didn't like him. Hardened mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. You think I was envious of his conquests? Look, pussy's not a problem for me. And definitely not a reason to off someone. See her confident gaze, her toned arms. Yeah. She wouldn't have had much trouble in the intimacy department. Yeah, sure. And I didn't like wild pines sending in those foreign hirelings. Me and a fuck ton of other people around here. I'm listening. Man, I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon me. Yeah. And I'm sure they also made some funny remarks about it. They always do. I've driven a lot of long haul and chugged a lot of beer, man. <sighs> Can't do either without some power of mind over bladder. And anyway, that wouldn't have been enough time. Wow, now I'm curious. Please, explain. Don't know it, but also... Evaluating your competence as a police officer. The shot couldn't have come from the roof, or we would have all heard it downstairs. She has a point there. No one mentioned. That didn't go super well. You've got to lay something better on her. And? Sure don't. The breach loader? No. This is such a wipeout. The gun store? Trigger happy jacks. What did you think? That I'm going to squeal on my gun supplier? Sorry, I'm not that kind of gal. No, they're not practical. Break too often. A doubt creeps over you. She sounds so sure of everything. So, not guilty. Yeah, evidence. I considered her a good friend, yeah. 
Oh, so that's where you were going with this. Well, that's a very sentimental way of putting it. We both had pasts we didn't want to catch up with us, and we enjoyed listening to music together. Why not go on a road trip? The lieutenant watches her expectantly, occasionally shaking from the pain. Okay, fine. I was into her. Clausie was into me too for a time, I know it. We even fooled around once. And yeah, after that I thought maybe we could make a go of it. She does know how to pick them. She rejected me with some wishy-washy bullshit about how she was confused because she felt so close to me and valued my friendship so much and how guilty she felt for leaving me on. I knew that wasn't the whole story, but thought, fine, I'll take it and move on. Yeah, one time when we'd both been drinking, I said some heated things about how dangerous her patterns with men were. I was a little worried to blow it out of proportion in her head. All the drugs she was doing can make you feel like you're living in a DeLorean tragedy. Yeah, the girl seemed terrified. The Merc was beyond caring what happened to his mortal coil. It was a no-brainer. Go ahead. It's your body. And why, too, he thinks. But keep on. This must be done. Who doesn't? Oh, you probably mean Claudia's rooftop. Sure, I've hung out there. She's got this great antenna. It's very powerful. I used it to tune into RCM frequencies. That's how I knew to be prepared for your arrival. The view's pretty bomb, too. But you might say the antenna was the main attraction there, yeah. Along with Plaza. Yes, I'm sure. And anyway, as I said before, the shot had to have come from afar. No. Gifts of flowers and candy aren't really my style. So now I'm leaving revolutionary symbols around? Come on. I never did understand why, when someone dies, a hothouse's worth of flowers has to die too. No, I did not. Yeah? Where? More. More questions before doing anything. Damn it. Destroy that thing already. How should I know? As I keep saying, he already had a bullet in his head when I got to him, and there hasn't been any useful gossip over the radio. Those rings around her eyes. Her tired voice. She's been staying up late, listening in on the conversations crisscrossing around the maids. For this radio? You've been following the case? Who hasn't? You know I can still see him there, in Claus's room, lying on his side. He was still warm, but the bluish light coming through the broken window made him look as though he'd been dead for a good long while. Clausia didn't want to turn the lamp on. She was afraid of another shot. She eyes you warily, as though gauging your sincerity. It's okay. We just want to... Uh, uh... All right, don't kill yourself over it. I was shooting the shit with Hardy and the boys over a few beers, like always. Then Klasha comes in, all pale and shuddering. She sits down with a drink, trying to steady her nerves. So I grab a seat next to her. No, I really didn't. She's not that easy to read. I just assumed she'd done too much blow. It wouldn't be a first for her. But, no such luck. She was in some deep shit. She asked me to come upstairs. The merc she'd been going with was lying on the bedroom floor, dead. I knew she couldn't get the authorities involved, so yeah. You made it look like he'd been hanged. What? No. Faking a lynching was her idea. She looks shaken. She wasn't surprised to be ratted out, but framed. Yeah, in cold blood. It really surprised me how quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once we got up there. It was like she was another person. The party girl was gone. 
She asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could wind the shower head around his neck to fake lividity. Then she dressed him while I went to get the Hardy Boys. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether to admire her or be disturbed. As I keep telling you cops, we didn't hear anything downstairs. No gunshot, nothing. But even if this is true, weren't you worried this lynching might lead to... War? The thought crossed my mind. But the mercenary's death was going to have repercussions either way. Although the way things are going... Eh, fuck it. I'm not responsible for these people after what they did to me. I saw you roll into town. I wasn't about to stick around for questioning by a goddamn La Puta Madre agent. So this is what she was scared to tell Titus. This cop, this cop, that strange, distant fear is getting close now. It's a fear of yourself. Yes, you. Everyone says you're his peon, his human can opener. Through the sudden sharp pain in your head, you hear the lieutenant mumble something to himself. Fucking hell. And why me? You hear through the white noise. It's especially bad suddenly. Felt like a vein exploded. Everyone in Jamrock. The cops. The criminals. Why do you think I'm holed up in here with a goddamn death ray waiting for you? Right. Sure. You don't know. Yeah, sure. I'm sure La Puta Madre himself will explain it all to you soon enough. A man in a white suit walks through a garden coaxed from soil that had once been covered in asphalt. A city block closed off from the rest of the city by dark buildings. Rows and rows of poppies, most of which have lost their pink bloom, flank his steps. The man looks around, then up at the sky, sighs. Taken out a knife, he crouches at the end of one flower bed. He scores a seabot very gently. Milky sack begins to ooze out. The pain comes over you again. You know what I did. I fucked him over. And now I have Harry Can Opener in my lair. Fucking Titus. What bunker? Don't know anything about it. No one's been around since I set up camp. But I'm sure I'm not the first vagabond to... Keep calm. Breathe in. After the pain recedes, it's a little clearer. The lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. It still hurts like hell, but... <sighs> All good, officer. Be careful. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Oh, fuck it. Problem solving. Ma'am! Put the gun down. That's not the solution to your problems. You are... Oh, yes it is. You should know the words to say. You've been here yourself. So why is it not coming to you? Because you've misread the situation from the beginning. And now her finger squeezes the trigger. No, wait. Finally, it comes to you. A way to connect with her. She flashes you an incredulous grin. Then she exhales sharply, shakes her head, and pulls the trigger. You watch as her brains trickle out through her neon hair. Lieutenant Yefreitor Dubois, control your emotions. We did our job. This won't be the worst thing that happens on this case, believe me. You can't let this break you. 
We clean up. It may take days for processing to pick up her body. We need to move it somewhere. That tent there. red tent stands by dispassionately. It was pitched by practiced hands. She was used to camping out. You see, a rolled up sleeping bag and personal belongings. We should put her in the sleeping bag so the rats don't get to her. The lieutenant nods. There she lies, cocooned in the sleeping bag surrounded by empty cigarette packs, books, and half-read magazines. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. See anything? Rega Monthly, Journal of Material Science. More Technological Digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine. It's a leather notebook. You pocket the worn brown leather journal. She watches by, motionless. We should read this immediately, like right now. A thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name, Schneller. The journal falls open. About two thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently, perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. We could learn a lot from this. Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. Professionalism is his coping mechanism. Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor, sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Short wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. Staff issues. Always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. Nothing on March 4th. March 5th though, well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this, loyal to a fault, except, but that's another matter entirely. You have no idea what she means. These are personal notes. Don't expect to understand all of it. That name isn't mentioned as far as you can tell. What about this M? Could this be La Puta Madre? Here, 
March 9th and March 15th. Great. M's peon is coming to town, no doubt to investigate the lynching. But also, I feel it in my gut to finally put a bullet in my head. While I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. Well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? The call? Did M call her personally? Why? Things played out just as she had feared. Except you didn't shoot her. It's in you to do something like this. Kill her. Physically, at least. You could pull the trigger if you had to. Yes, you could. You'd pull it one, two, three times and watch her fall. Been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best in people, the boys, for example. But experience tells me did M feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people, they'd take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. The most recent entry is from today. It reads... Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run, not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. I don't think she killed a mercenary. It looks like she might have been framed. This whole thing was a detour, and a fatal one, he thinks. Don't get emotional. She was in plenty of trouble, even without the murder charge. Still, it's a nasty business. Ah, no, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. The head of a major Jamrock gang specializing in drug production and trafficking. A very bad person. Classio was the one who pointed the finger at Ruby. Perhaps she was trying to steer us away from herself, or... Maybe she had an accomplice. Either way, we need to keep an eye on her. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling and rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. Something tells you you should be extra careful from now on. Searchlight Division. You've sharpened your senses by being on the lookout for missing persons. Now you notice more of what's happening around you. Perhaps, when you're done with this case, you can join the Searchlight Division of the RCM and find every Revisholian that's ever gone missing without a trace. There is undoubtedly a backlog of such cases, because you never know. A missing person could be just around the edge, barely out of sight.
Aye, the sea's gonna calm down soon, I can feel it. The wind is turning south. Just up ahead. Danger. You are prepared. Don't put away your friend. Your weapon. Raindrops slip from the barrels of your Villiers 9mm pistol. Yes. I hear commotion. Let's go. Good. Be ready to take damage. Shits to give, loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right? Shut up. You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. There's something very wrong with him. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The Kipt is merciful. Willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street? This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost? Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower. And he knows it. Peaceful. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse. The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Fuck, there's a third one. How did we miss something like this? This third one, he is the most dangerous of them all. Heavily armed. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. The Mercenary Tribunal. My plan is not to get killed. But we have to intervene. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. Pig fuck! Ah yeah! Welcome to the fucking party. You're probably gonna get killed too. I don't give a shit if you're cop. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. Suddenly, the grip of your sidearm feels comforting and warm in your hand. Feels like it's saying, do it. Shoot him in the mouth. Shoot him before he shoots you. Yes, yes, just shoot him. I'm barely keeping you together here. No time to talk. He will only rattle you. Whatever you do, stop wasting your time thinking about it. Who the fuck is that? Classia, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left! Unarmed, hunched, but keeping it together. She left! Her room's cleaned out! Right before these assholes showed up! We should have arrested her. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! She's gone. Forget about it now. Concentrate on this. A 
A plume of smoke and fire erupts from the gun and your hand goes numb from the explosion. The smoke drifts west with the wind. You hear the plaza erupt in violence, slow like a waterfall in reverse. There is a hole in his cheek. Blood gushes out as he stumbles backward, eyes filled with rage and disbelief, gurgling, muttering something unintelligible. His lips, moving, swollen with fear, are trying to say, shoot him, shoot him, but he can't. To your right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His moves are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. You steer down the barrel of the gun. You see Rude's mask behind it, his eyes in the slit of the helmet, like a camera lens, focusing on you. 0.6 seconds remain. There are six little black dots in the tip of the thick barrel, like a honeycomb. This is a knock cannon. It shoots six rounds in one pull of the trigger. Is there anything, anything, we could use to protect this frail body? That gun will tear us to pieces. A full suit of armor can't be too agile. You can shift direction faster than he can. There's no way. You're just gonna die. From the corner of your eye, you see the lieutenant raise his pistol and aim it at Rude. A low shot rings. You feel a tapping like rain on your chest plate. Heavy drops of rain. Then the sound of dice rolling as the cuirass distributes the shot evenly from plate to plate. You got hit. The armor took most of it, but still your ribcage burns. Feels like blood is slowly seeping into your lungs. God, please. Two shots ring at once. <laughs> One from the lieutenant's pistol and the other from the balls. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Oh God, watch out. You see two crazed eyes stare at you through all the smoke and the panic. With blood gushing from his face, the man raises his pistol at you. Then he squeezes the trigger. The look of vengeance, framed in blood, lips shaking. This is the last thing he'll do on Earth. But he will do it. He is your end. Here it comes, death. You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. The Hardy Boys are screaming, fighting, dying. Someone jumps over you. Nearby gunfire shatters glass. Stop! The cop! Protect the cop! He's down! Warm blood pools underneath you. It's sticky. And there's so much of it. Don't go into shock. Hold on. Most of what's down there. You can also feel the bone where the bullet went in. Something very sharp, like broken teeth under your fingers. Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. Stay with me. Yes, keep talking. You hear me? Stay awake. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy and the sounds ever more distant. And a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away. Almost gone. 
when suddenly you sense something behind him. A slender white shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Scream immediately. He's gonna die. Shoot. Dead. You hear your bloody lips mumble. You try to give him your gun so he'd understand. But he does not. He doesn't look into your eyes and see the fear there. He just shakes his head, still crouched over you. You hear a distant gunshot, velvety smooth. A red circle has appeared on the lieutenant's jacket. It's growing fast. Like a pillow, he falls on you. Cold nylon and blood slumped on you as the lights go out. All the lights. The last thing you hear is the sound of his spectacles landing on the pavement next to you. This is death. One more door, baby. One more door. Kim? There is no Kim. There is no fight. It's over. It was. Have mercy on yourself. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Over the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep. And rotting. And being disinfected. And smelling of drugs and feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers. Thrashing in his wound sleep. He can't go. Not before the case is solved. There is a radio in the distance. A radio of the world. Plain sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon you will return to the world. You're thirsty. Reach for the glass of water by the bed. The world is still there. Sleep some more. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. It was him. He is the infernal engine. He never stops. He only gets worse. You see the shape of a prepubescent boy in foul pants. It turns double, then triple, from the pain. He says, Coinslot's dead? Just kidding, Pico. <laughs> the booby wagon took the vino cloud away. He's probably gonna live. To the hospital, fucktard. Try to keep up with Kuno. Thank God. Okay, he's alive. They say you shot that fucker in the face. That's fucking cool to Kuno. So I thought I'd stick around. Sure, Kuno's gonna help you with that. Kuno's in a given mood right now. You tore some shit up there, pig. Got shot too. How would Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking doctor. Pretty fucking bad, Kuno thinks. But you're one lucky pig. The doc took the bullet out and said you'll live. You got shot in the shoulder too. But luckily you were in that fancy teapot and it took the hit for you. Are your legs attached to Kuno? Can the Kuno move your legs? The fuck should I know? You can walk. If it's possible, then, by pure willpower alone, you're a psycho locomotor. That's pretty cool to Kuno. Kuno's also a psycho. Kuno did? It's cool. Just remember, Kuno doesn't save shit for free. Yeah, some cunt from your station came over and knife fucked you when you were sleeping. Nick's fuck leave, I think he was called. Said he was a doctor, then fucked off and told me to phone him if you shit yourself. We're detecting Drumine in your bloodstream. It's a potent morphine-based painkiller. The good doctor must have given you some. It's gonna suck when it wears off. 
Why, in the name of fuck, would Kuno be hurt? Kuno's fucking smart. Kuno wasn't in that fuck pile. Kuno knows when shit goes south, unlike you. Go easy, pig. You want to lean on the Kuno or something? You can take it. Just don't lean on the old leg too heavily. Your balance is way off. You feel like you're about to fall over. So, how is it? Kuno can see you're trying to shit him. But Kuno's unshittable, so fuck does Kuno care? Still, you see something akin to respect in his eyes. Yeah, that kid's taken a beating. Or ten. From his dad. He has regard for a man who can walk after taking some damage. Some of those Union goons got fucked. Now the whole harbour is in lockdown. Even Kuno can't get in there. Yeah, she's way gone, pig. Kuno's been here for two days, and Baby Beard and you are the only fucks in the building. Of course she's really gone. What did you think? The big fucko. Yeah, he's drinking downstairs. Kuno's not into that. Yeah, that's what Kuno said. No one goes in or out. Shit's paranoid now. No problem. Kuno shares the info. The fuck you asking Kuno for? How would Kuno know? Kuno's fucking 12. Oh, really? You can't get to that fat fuck Everhart anymore because the harbour's locked down. Half the hardy bitches are dead and your company bitch sailed off. He's really been keeping tabs on you. The hardies, even the company rep. Kuno thinks you're fucked, but I can help you. What you got? Bounce that shit off Kuno. I, again, something in him is shifting, changing. Yeah, what? What bells? Fuck, pig. Kuno doesn't know about this flower shit. Kuno's not feeling it. Huh? That could have been there for years. Kuno thinks it's a dead end. You want Kuno to be a yes man? Or you want me to tell it like it is? Walls are full of holes here, pig. Even Kuno knows that. There are fucking footprints everywhere, pig. Pigs are too into this footprint shit. Kuno just saw footprints outside on the sidewalk. Yeah, that sounds real to Kuno. Forensic shit. True crime shit. Let's check out some crime scenes and assess shit. Pig style. Anything else? Yeah. Like what? Shit. Playing the Kuno like that? You better have something else for me. Miracle? Shit. What is this weak shit? You gotta watch your own back. Miracles don't fucking happen in Martinez. Get real. Is that like a fucking street name or something? It's pretty cool to Kuno. Come on, pig. Thoughts didn't kill Kuno's gimp. It was a person. Even Kuno can figure this shit out. Shit ain't nothing to Kuno. What now? Will Pig, you ready to walk, Will Pig? So, listen, Pig. Kuno's been thinking about shit, and uh, Kuno's coming with you. Help you wrap this shit up, final style. This scene is dead. Kuno's out of here. Might as well be a pig. Big up fucky fingers on me way out. Accepted the Kuno like a motherfucker. What are we gonna do now? Yeah, debrief Kuno. Let Kuno know the plan. A gust of wind blows in from the bay. The aluminium box around you vibrates imperceptibly. A familiar cold. A red thread on the roof upstairs. Taut. Plucked like a string by the gust. That's Clarge, right? Bitch next door. Kuno's thinking the same thing. Let's rock it, pigman.
These papers bear the stamp of the RCM. They appear to be fragments of the lieutenant's paperwork, half finished. You may have notes on this and other recent cases. The child. Dom's unfinished. Dom's unfinished too. The man with the hole in his head. Born in our shit. Ah, oh, motorcycle emptiness. That's a cool case. Kuno can solve that shit for the Beano. No one tells Kuno what to call something. But the Beano was alright in Kuno's book. Kuno's pig. Very little. This is a daily writer. He's just started copying notes from his notebook, preparing them for filing. The case appears to be named, however. KK57. 0828 kilometers to the northeast in the infirmary of Precinct 57. Lieutenant Kim Pinball Kitsuragi rests under a heart monitor. A triage sign, colored yellow, hangs from his injury record. Safe, it means. He coughs, propped up against the pillow. Why are you here? asks the man as the cough fit resides. His eyes are black and moist. To inquire about the Lieutenant Efrater, sir. I am his partner, says Satellite Officer Jean Vigmer, standing in the doorway. Then why are you wasting time here? Coughs Kim. He's out there, in Martinez, unsupervised, without cover. You need to get there. His cough gets the best of him. He grabs a glass. On his right hand side, a little blue notebook, open at case notes. This year, you can see references to The Child, Half a Dozen Stolen Property Cases. Next to the stack of bills, you see a note, a few lines jotted down in large, uneven handwriting, just as the writer was about to rush out the door. I'm sorry, I fucked everyone over. P.S. I didn't kill him. P.P.S. Gift upstairs. A gift, huh? That's fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, yeah. Fugitive on the run shit. Kuno's seen this shit before. A trap, probably. But don't sweat it. You got the Kuno spot on you? Let's go in. Just don't walk into another radio trap, okay? Relax. Not everyone is out to trap you. You see the same two neon lit shapes. A man and a woman. Oh, oh, Kuno knows this shit. Ballistic shit. Science radio shit. Show us where the shot came from. A ray of backward motion explodes from his mouth to the roof out. It suggests the bullet came from the extreme upper quadrant of possible angles, from a point beyond the roof. B triple prime, the island in the bay. Pig, you're really fucking onto something there. Yeah. Kuno's seen that shit. Crazy shit. Ain't nothing to Kuno, but lots of places to hide there. Kuno's got no fucking clue. You need to pig this shit, cop style. Cool shit, sub-zero shit. Kuno's listening, you got his attention. So what's next? The wind blows in from the open window. The boy squints, looking into the cold distance across the water. He senses danger, possibly a trap. You shouldn't ignore this. The kid's got serious street smarts. There, across the grey water, amidst crumbling concrete, a birch tree, the ruins of a flat tower, remember? Totally what a sniper would use. Aircraft gun. Fuck yeah, I'm in. How are you going to get to the island? Kuno has his ways, but that ain't for your fat old ass. There's this lady in the village. She... Uh, uh, yeah, there are, there are boats there. You go, do shit there. You'll get one on the coast.
As you look back, you think, so love did do him in, after all. If it weren't for her, he would not have been there. The shot would not have connected with his soft palate. You do not know. A wind of needles. Airships flutter in the stratosphere. No. Communism killed him. Remember? Love made it possible. You know this much. Who knows? It's getting cold out. You should go. Oh, you're up. It's good to see you back on your feet. Did you like your room? I cleaned it for you. Fucking cleaned it. What a dick. Dancing around in his maid uniform. You're welcome. I thought it would be nice for you to wake up in a clean place after you, let's be fair, defended this establishment and its clientele from gunfire. I give credit where credit is due, and that, sir, was a nice shot. I was watching until you hit him. Crawled inside, then. Bullets started flying. Anyway, <clears throat> I hope at least your partner is recovering quickly. Also, you're staying here for free now. That's right, this establishment supports cops. The stay is free, the drinks are not. Just felt I needed to specify that. Oh, you know... People don't tend to stick around after shootouts. Turns out they're not good for business. I don't remember everyone who comes here. And many people wear sunglasses inside lately. Must be a fad. Yeah, I was. Yeah. That's because I'm a bad ass. Yeah, I don't know. Clients were panicking. And also, I guess I sort of found out that I don't give a shit if I die. No problem. They'll come back. They always do. Hi again, gendarme. Bye-bye, gendarme. Seeing you approach, the bruised man raises his bear in welcome. Careful. Looks like we got a situation here. Those guys, a wakuno calls the f army. They think they're a big deal around here. Crazy motherfuckers. <whistles> Didn't think you had that fury in you. But I guess I've misjudged a lot of people lately. That was one hell of a shot. Hell of a shot. The fucks did not expect that. I guess what I'm trying to say here is, thank you for intervening, Capo. That was mighty brave of you. Situation diffused. He's so proud of himself. You're tempted to believe that he just diffused the situation. Well, cheers anyway, Copper. Gio was old. I think he'd be pretty happy with the way he went. Never could imagine him withering away on a sickbed. But Angus... He was just a stupid kid. Didn't realize the mess he'd gotten into. Trusted me. Here it comes. The last one is the worst one. He only deals with it by drinking copious amounts of 8% beer. An honest tactic. And effective. And Glenn. Glenn was my friend. Best I've ever had. I'd love that crazy homo like my own brother. We're all fucked without him. But what do you do? This job is shit. Dennis? That poor little rat is dead too. I always thought he'd run. But no. He stayed. Stupid, brave fella. Well, yeah. Memento Mori. Right. It means you might die tomorrow. 
so live every day like it's your last. Ain't that right, fellas? Absolutely. Today, I'm going to get drunk. It or you might die of a heart failure or syphilis. Hey, hey, fuck you for ruining a beautiful idea. I guess I'll take a closer look at our union members. There's bound to be some ambitious fellows there who'd love nothing more than advancing social democracy by busting some heads. Might even ask Tibbs if he's tired of replacing windows and maybe wants to have some fun with his brother. Anyway, don't you worry. As long as Titus Hardy's standing, there will be Hardy Boys. Don't know. Don't care. I'll be glad if I never see that fucking woman again. He shrugs and tries to look uninterested. Judging by the sight of you, I'd suggest crawling into bed. Yeah, go pay Monica visit him. I'll go pay your partner a visit in the hospital. I hear he got shot up pretty bad. We don't have time for that grief shit. Kun and Pig are gunning it. We got a case to solve. Kun? And what the fuck now? Easy he. Let the kid be. This is a day of mourning, and I don't want it turned into a joke. You chasing the kid around, the kid calling you a fucktard. We don't need that shit. Right. Kuno keeps silent, too. You look after yourself now, copper. Death passed on you today. But men don't get that lucky twice. Copper loco. Good luck in Jamrock. Scars made the best tattoos, they say. Thanks for getting involved, man. Not a lot of cops would step into that line of fire, but you did. And if you ever feel like the uniform is holding you back, I've got a few vacancies. You'd make one hard, hardy boy, copper. Kuno's gonna scram now. Can't be seen with pigs. Can't shit on Kuno's good name. So yeah, see you on the C4 island. Try not to get shot or drunk again. Kuno's counting on your ass. Kuno will rejoin your party later. The graffito has been painted over the traces of the fight that took place here. It smells of blood and heavy fuel oil. This was Cindy the Scar. The red dyed fuel oil glistens. This was painted very recently. And blood, some of it may even be yours. Looks like a giant mop was used to turn it into lettering. Heavy fuel oil, isn't that flammable? The fuel oil catches fire immediately with an ominous hiss. A bright orange flash across the surface of the letters. Black smoke rises from the burning message. The flames warm your face. Then, a gust of cold wind and the fire falters. It's time to go to the island. Slowly, the flames subside, the fuel burning out. The air still smells of mazout and springtime. The tear machine stands in the corner. Um, is this about the question? To the left. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blisters. Okay, here. I hope Saint Batiste makes you feel better or something. Okay, here. I hope Saint Batiste makes you feel better or something. Okay, here. I hope s okay, here. I hope Saint B Okay, here. I hope Saint Okay, here. I hope Saint Batiste.
Officer, what happened? You're limping. Why are you limping? You look terrible. She sounds almost disappointed with you. Reprimanding you for falling and hurting your knee. Is this from the shooting in town? We heard gunshots. Not that we don't hear gunshots all the time, but they were closer than usual. So you're a killer? That's good, I guess. I guess. Better than being dead. Aye. I bet they are. The good ones, at least. Of course. Can I help you with something? That won't be a problem. It's wind still and the tar just dried. We've got two days of relative sunshine ahead. Hmm. Used to be some kind of fortification there before the war. For the communards. An anti-aircraft gun, I think. Bombed to bits in the landing. I haven't been there myself. Always steered clear of it. My husband used to drink there. Him and his drinking buddies. Always seemed like a bad place to drink to me. People died there during the landing, you know. My mother told me. Hundreds, maybe thousands even. The kids sometimes go there too. I know they do. On barges. I tell them not to, but they bring back old bullet casings and such. The twins. God forbid they bring the girl along on some rickety barge. Well, most of it's sunken. Underwater. That means concrete underwater. Cut your boat if you're not careful. Be sure to enter from the south side. Water's deep there. Aye, aye, Captain. If you promise to bring it back, and no scraping the hull, I just got it nice and yellow, and no drinking on the boat, and no joyriding either. The crow's feet disappear from the corners of her eyes as she smiles at you. Please be conservative with the fuel, will you? Just filled her up, but it's a small tank. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him. Um, that I am. That's, um, nothing. It's just a sea fort and some plants. You can dig a raft there, it's great. And, and, we make a fire. We make a, we make a fire. Mm-hmm. Gather the sticks for the fire. And bullets. Or oh, not real bullets, empty bullets. There are lights. The fire guy comes and asks us to put the fire out. Your nerve endings sting from the mention of a guy. No. Yes. Because, because, because he asks to put the fire out. Um, I don't know. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like people to be there. You shouldn't go. Yes. Because he doesn't want to be found. Smoke traces. A suspicious request. Made out of fear. I... I don't know. No, he doesn't live there. I don't think. No, he lives there. Been there twice, two times. Uh, he doesn't live there. He isn't there sometimes. I don't know. We, we ran. He just yelled, we shouldn't be there. Our father killed himself. Don't say that, he didn't. I'm sorry. There's a... Be careful out there. A skiff with a small steering engine in the back floats on the calm mirror of the sea. Its two seats are empty. 
The boat's belly is a shiny yellow color, industrial paint over fresh tar. You see it reflect off the water, along with the factory number, A72. Once you get in, that's it. One pull of the starter handle, and you're off into the bay. A strange trepidation comes over you. Are you sure you want to go now? Have you made all the necessary preparations? Closed all your accounts? Remember what the net picker said. It's a small tank. You won't be going back and forth on this. There. This is now a rock and roll skiff. It'll keep you company on this lonely voyage. Very cool. Now tune it to Sad FM. You know you want to. The boat comes to a slow stop. You turn the engine off. Then, there's silence. In the silence, a sputter of wings. A flock of quails takes off in a the distance. There is very little wind here today. The ghost is standing still. You look at your arms. Then the cliffs above you. Good, you made it. I mapped the place out, and uh, it looks like both of us aren't going to make it. This is Death Island, the Hellmore. I don't know. Maybe Kuno's just pessimistic because of the massive speed hangover. I did scout the place out. I can fill you in. The kid turns away from you, cautiously looking to his left and right. 
is on the edge. The chain trails off into the ocean, connecting the island to the supply depot on the coast. Cool fucking chain. Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno will use it to bring shit to the island. I'm gonna cut it there, um, just cause after that boat ride I feel a little bored. Um, so I'm gonna take a little break and then I'll be back a little bit later today. Uh, I'll be I'll be back in a bit.